thank you. Most talks in our industry are around mass adoption. When is mass adoption coming? How do we get there? Well, today I want to start with a bold statement. We've actually entered mass adoption already. We've passed that gate. Don't believe me, just look at the headlines. Think about it. Is there one society? Is there one country? Is there one field which hasn't been touched by our industry in one way or another? Let's take a look at South America, Argentina, Brazil. People are using stablecoins there on a day-to-day -day basis. Look at global institutions all over the world, banks. They're tokenizing real estate. They're tokenizing treasuries, bonds, fiat. Even look at your average day-to-day -day people, people who usually aren't in tech, let's say teenagers, let's say retired people. They're trading meme coins on a day-to-day -day basis. What more could we ask? We're already there. We've already touched every facet of society. And right now, the main question we should be asking ourselves is how do we actually sustain this growth? How do we ensure our space becomes the way the world works for the next 100 years? We've been here before. The place we're at today is very similar to where we were back in 2019. For those who remember, the space back then was complete chaos. You had people who are trying to build what we know today as DeFi, but back then you couldn't build anything, really. So the only applications were basically people swapping tokens from one to another. And every time someone tried to build something a little more complex, let's say a money market, let's say a derivative exchange, it would get hacked. Why? Because in order to build more complex applications, you actually needed to, being, to bring data on chain. And because there was no standard to do this, you would see Oracle hacks. Every two weeks, some Oracle would get hacked, and people would lose millions and millions of dollars. That wasn't a stable environment. That was complete, complete chaos. That's when we created Chainlink Data Feeds. Chainlink Data Feeds was the first data product that was built with long term in mind. It was meant to act as a stable foundation for DeFi developers to build on. And guess what? It actually worked. Whenever we integrated Chainlink data feeds on a new blockchain, the DeFi ecosystem on there would take off. It would go from zero dollar to billions of dollars in a few months. What we discovered was actually very interesting. Our space is so new, so innovative, it has so much potential that if you provide developers all over the world with a stable foundation to build on, they build stuff that grows from zero to billions in a few months. The growth is, is astonishing, simply. And you can look at the numbers to confirm that. Over the last six years, Chainlink data feeds have secured 16.6 trillions of dollars. They've delivered 15 billion data points on chain used by more than 1,000 applications. We went from a chaotic space where nothing could get built, where people would get hacked every two weeks, to something that over the span of five years generated 16.6 trillions of dollars. That's the potential of our industry when you provide stable foundations for people to build on. So we get some type of recipe. Our industry gets cycles of adoption. This adoption brings people from all over the world, innovators, passionate folks from every single field globally. Every country is part of it. And once you provide a stable foundation, stable standards for these folks to build on, you actually start to see scale. You start to see growth. Scale is actually the name we used for our blockchain partnership program. The SCALE program is meant to be a, a program to create sustainable data feeds on blockchains. Most blockchains with a DeFi ecosystem are part of the SCALE program. We have around 20 blockchains. Only this week, we're announcing four new blockchains joining the SCALE program. I have only two on this slide, Botanics and Hedera, because the two are announced later today. Stay tuned for these announcements. Eh? They'll be very exciting. So, DeFi gave us legitimacy all over the world. If you think about it, most governments, most companies, most people know our industry because of DeFi. 
and DeFi created a new wave of adoption for our industry. This new wave of adoption is global. All over the world, people know about our space now. And think about it. Think about the difference. Four years ago, was it the case? No, it's new. We have so many new people who are joining our space. And we enter the new cycle of adoption. This cycle of adoption, I call it the rise of tokenization. And just like before, we're back at stage one. We're in chaotic adoption place. But this time, the stakes are actually a bit different. Tokenization is a huge opportunity for the space. It's actually the biggest opportunity we've ever seen. Today, our space, if you count DeFi plus stablecoins, is around $250 billion. The Bitcoin space by itself is $1.5 trillion. The value that can be tokenized through real-world assets is trillions and trillions of dollars. Imagine you bring this value into our ecosystem. It will make our space today that we're so proud of, for good reasons. It will make it look like a small POC for something much, much, much greater. Well, that's our vision. But solving this is not an easy task. Our space, since 2019, has become extremely, extremely complex. I want to break it down in three different parts. The first part is the tokens. We have native tokens, and we have tokenized assets. So tokenized assets are BTC5, they're real-world assets. The native tokens are meme coins, NFTs, LSTs, LRTs. You have tons of different assets already. All of these different assets need complex applications, much more complex applications than those we had back in 2019. Now you need derivatives, you need options, you need so many more apps that we didn't have back then. And there is a simple reason to it. If you're trying to onboard TradFi into our space, you not only onboard the assets, you also onboard the applications, you also onboard the utility. That's what we're seeing here. All of these high-performance applications need super high-performance blockchains. Back in 2019, we had maybe Ethereum. That was it, actually. Today, we have so many chains. We have hundreds and hundreds of blockchains. New L1s, new L2s are launched every single week. You have EVMs, you have non-EVMs, you have L1s, you have L2s, you have L3s. You lose count, frankly. There are so many. So all of these pieces need somehow to be connected, right? You can't have a siloed ecosystem. All of that stuff I'm listing here needs to be connected in some way. It needs to be unified through a standard. That's what we're working on at Chainlink. Chainlink is the only platform today that aims to solve this puzzle. It's the only platform that aims to put all of these puzzle pieces together into a unified space. And this platform cannot be created overnight. This is a result of six years of running, seven years actually, of running DONs on-chain in production, securing value. These are all the products, these are all the services that came from this. Let's look at how our standard can be applied in the case of tokenization. You can break down tokenization in three different steps. The first step is going from off-chain to on-chain. It's the tokenization itself, right? It's I take an asset, I tokenize it on-chain. Once you have this token, you need it to go from one blockchain to another. You need it to be able to access the hundreds of chains we have in our space today. And the third part is, once I've done this, I need to bring some utility to this token. I need it to get into DeFi somehow. I need it to be borrowed. I need it to be lent. I need it to have options, right? Those are the three steps. The first step I call primary asset minting. This step actually has tons and tons of risk. That's why you need standards around it. The overmint issue is an issue that's been around in our space for many, many years. You've all encountered it. You've all read about it. You have an asset, and this asset has a fixed supply. And from one day to the next, the supply goes to infinity. So the value goes to zero. These are the results. Those are not very stable results. You don't really build an industry on top of that stuff, right? We need a standard to make the minting process actually secure. Then going from one blockchain to another. Sounds simple, right? $2.8 billion of dollars have been lost because of cross-chain hacks. Because one token going from one blockchain to another has a ton of risks around it. $2.8 billion. 
It's like 1% of the entire size of our industry, if you count DeFi plus stablecoins. It's a huge amount. Again, you need a standard to actually be able to bridge your token safely from one blockchain to another. That's what we've been working on. For the primary asset minting, going from off-chain to on-chain, we have proof of reserve. Proof of reserve is actually a super elegant way to use smart contracts to fix the supply of your asset based on the underlying, underlying reserves that actually back the asset. In the minting function, you just have a safety mint check, which checks, am I looking to mint more than there is in reserves? If that's the case, the transaction reverts automatically. This very simple operation prevents us to have billions and billions of potential hacks in the future. This very simple step being implemented in tokens ensure our industry can never see mass, mass minting events, mass over mint events. And also keep in mind, in a world where trust in institutions and there is a scarcity of trust all over the world, having a proof of reserve system to actually create verifiability, transparency on your token is a very, very clear improvement compared to what we have today. Now, if you want your token to actually go from one blockchain to another, you can implement the CCT standard. The CCT standard uses CCIP under the wood to ensure that your token can be burned on one chain, minted on the other chain to go from one blockchain to another without any issues. So, if you start to combine these steps, you actually see the outline of what the token standard could look like. We call this standard the smart asset standard. Let's walk through it. How does it work? Well, step number one, with a smart asset standard, I can now mint my asset from, from off-chain to on-chain safely using proof of reserve. No overmint can ever happen. I have a safety mint check in the function. Whenever I want to get this token from one blockchain to another, I use CCIP to be able to burn it on one chain, mint it on the other chain. And finally, if I want to bring some utility to this token, I can use Chainlink data feeds, Chainlink NAV, Chainlink data streams to actually include my token into applications to give it utility. This standard is something that brings a verifiable, transparent token that can go into any chain, into any DAP in a fully secure manner. This solves all the risks I outlined, I outlined earlier. And this is actually a standard on which billions, trillions could be tokenized. This is the unlock for the rise of tokenization. Now, once you have this standard, you can actually see adoption start to happen. This standard is not an idea, it's not a dream. It's something that's actually a reality today. If you look at the BTC Phi space, we have 90% of the value on BTC Phi currently integrated or integrating the smart asset standard. If you look at real world assets, we have tens and tens of different real world asset platforms, tokenized issuers who are adopting the smart asset standard. The adoption is accelerating non-stop. And here we can see that with the smart asset standard, you actually have a way to get tokens into our ecosystem. Now that you have these tokens, you need to create complex applications, the ones I was highlighting above, right? You need to have derivatives, you need to have options. How do we do this? Well, that's why we created data streams. Data streams unlock the potential of DeFi. It's a way to get sub-second latency data updates on-chain. It's basically a way to bring TradFi level performance into DeFi. And here again, the adoption is showing off. We have tens of different users on data streams. Just in the last two weeks, actually, we integrated seven new derivative exchanges onto data streams. These seven exchanges combined, their volume is around 20% of the total volume traded on-chain by perpetual protocols in our space. That's what adoption looks like. Now, we have tokens flowing into our space, and these tokens connect to dApps. And now you need all of the chains which have been built over the last two years to be able to connect to each other. You don't want them to be silos. You want them to be able to connect, just like TCP IP is able to connect networks. 
That's what CCIP does. CCIP today has been adopted by more than 14 blockchains. Not all of them are on these slides because some of them will be announced later. But just in the last two weeks, we integrated three new blockchains into the CCIP canonical standard. Again here, adoption is taking off. This connectivity standard will allow us to connect all of these ecosystems together. So what I'm starting to show here is the pieces of the puzzle fitting together into a unified standard. And what this unified standard will bring is the next stage of our industry. This next stage is basically sustainable mass adoption. History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. We are today at the same place we were back in 2019. We're at the place where we actually build standards to get to the next stage. And that's what Chainlink has been working on for the last years. We've been building the standards that allow us to access the next cycle of adoption for our space. And this next cycle won't be like the others. This next cycle will actually last. It's going to be the cycle where the whole world starts running on blockchain and keeps running on it for the next 100 years. We're building foundations that are made out of marble to make it happen. We're building what we need to see the dawn of a new age for our world. And frankly, we couldn't do it alone. So today I want to thank the thousands of applications, the hundreds of chains that have integrated Chainlink over the last few years. I want to thank the hundreds of thousands of community members all over the world who've been supporting this vision through the ups, through the downs, over the last few years. Together, we're ensuring this space is not a dream. It's not an idea. It actually becomes a reality. And if you pay attention to the world, and you believe in the vision this ecosystem has for the world, then you can see, as the world gets more and more unstable, there is actually a path to creating the vision that was outlined by Bitcoin 10 years ago. This space becoming a beacon of stability in an unstable world. That's what we're all working on today together. So I want to thank you all, because what we're working on will live beyond our time, and it's something that's truly bigger than any of us. Thank you very much. All right, next.